Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel, The Francophile Reader. So today I want to address racism on booktube and I want to talk about it with respect to my channel and the racism that I have seen on my channel. I want to talk about how I have encouraged this racism by not deleting the comments right away and also by not making content that showcases the diversity of French and Francophone literature. So this is of course a response to the protests all around the world in response to the murder of George Floyd and in response to police brutality and systematic racism, particularly in the United States, but in nations that are former colonizers. So when I started this channel, I was the medieval reader. And channels and just content online dedicated to history, especially white history, tends to be a safe haven for racists. And that means that I know that there are people who subscribed to my channel because they wanted to escape from the reality of white supremacy and not have to face that. They didn't want to be educated about this matter. And I know that in not talking enough about race on my channel and not showcasing francophone authors who are not white, I have allowed for these people to think that this is okay, that, that, you know, we don't need to be talking about race, but we do. And I have made a few videos talking about the Negritude movement in the Caribbean, um, made a video about Sepulveda, but I, I haven't made enough videos to really talk about how French is spoken in over 20 countries in the world. And the reason being is imperialism. It's the history of colonization. And so then when I moved into talking about early modern history, I mean, we're talking 16th century here. This is the history of the voyages to the new world, okay? This is the history of racism. It's like sort of the birth of racism. Not entirely, okay? Because there were, the race was invented in the Middle Ages. Um, but of course, the 16th century being the age of voyage and colonization is the history, is, is where we're, you know, this, this history of brutality that has continued into the modern era. Again, history channels, especially when they deal with the history of Europeans, we can be complicit by not calling out comments that suggest that Europe was always white and or that race is not a topic to discuss when we talk about history, European history. This is not just black history. This is also white history. And whiteness is, has been developed from its opposition to blackness. While I am not white, I do benefit from white supremacy. I think sometimes when we talk about people of color, that term erases the unique experiences that different people of color have. The fa racism that I face is more of just people thinking that I'm not American. They're asking me where I'm from. That happens every week. But I never face police brutality. I don't have police patrolling my neighborhood 24-7, stopping and frisking me. I don't fear for my life when I'm pulled over if I drive over the speed limit. And I certainly don't fear being crushed by a police officer to death. I am also multi-ethnic and relatively light-skinned. My family, my parents are immigrants, which is a very different experience than having parents who are descendants of enslaved people. So. Because and so because I grew up in white spaces, I went to white, predominantly white schools, I grew up in the suburbs, which was white. 
I did not experience police brutality. I never saw it. There's a lot that has that I, I, I didn't know about. And I must admit that about five, six years ago, when I was in my early 20s, I pretended that none of this was real because I never witnessed it firsthand. But because I believe in education and because of the people who really made me face the reality of US history, I have gained a better understanding of the prison system, of police brutality, and how all of that is racist. The book that really helped me see that was The New Jim Crow by Michelle Alexander. I'm speaking primarily to any of you who, like me, grew up in predominantly white spaces. I never saw these things that we're talking about today. Now, of course, you do. They're all on Instagram, they're on Twitter, they're on Facebook. Now, more than ever, you have no excuse. But if you are on here and you're following my channel, you're someone who believes in education, then you need to educate yourself and you need to go and find resources. And really, it is not that hard to do to make you understand how oppressed black people are in the United States and how systematic this oppression is. So for me, the New Jim Crow has been really important. Another, you know, on YouTube, the channel I would recommend to talk about race in entertainment is For Harriet. Um, Kim is the host of For Harriet, and she talks particularly about the experience of black women in the music and film industries. And she talks about colorism, which is a topic that isn't discussed so much in the English speaking world, though it is discussed somewhat in the French speaking world, particularly in the Caribbean. So my history is that I am, I have this proximity to whiteness. I am protected by this idea of being a model minority, which while it has its dark side, it is by no means the same as being brutalized by police. It is not the same thing as being passed over because you have a name that suggests that you might be black. My school district, because it was a predominantly white school district, had resources that black schools generally don't have access to. So I have a lot of privileges and it is something that I have been working on, but I am far from where I need to be. And I know that my channel is partially responsible for aiding and abetting, so to speak, um, white supremacists. I will be deleting any and all comments that suggest that the protests going on right now are mere hysterics, that there is no truth behind it, that there isn't systematic racism, and that white supremacy doesn't exist. I am not going to allow for these comments to even be on my channel. And if they are, you know, after twice, I will block the person from the channel. This is not going to be a safe haven for ignorance of any kind, especially ignorance that actually leads to the death of black lives. That is my promise. And it is what my channel henceforth will be about. I have a list below of black booktubers who read predominantly adult fiction, whom I am subscribed to. Don't subscribe to them and never watch their videos. I mean, speaking for myself, I have 1300 subscribers. I don't have 1300 people who watch my videos. I don't even have half of that who watch my videos. And it's just, it's obvious. And it's not a huge problem for me. But if you want to support black booktubers, you need to be engaging with their content, joining in their read-alongs, talking about their channels, watching their videos, because subscribing and then unsubscribing is only th that gesture, it means nothing. It's insulting 
and it's only there to make you feel better about yourself. So that is my message today. There are so many booktubers, mostly black booktubers, who have made videos about booktuber silence concerning racism. And they shouldn't have to make videos like this. I will link them below. And like I said, I have a list of black booktubers. You should watch their videos and decide if you want to subscribe to their channel and engage with their content. That is the least that we can do to promote the fantastic black content creators on our platform. Thank you everybody for watching and I will talk to you later. Bye now.